Hi, if you're interested to understand what is the easiest way to invest, at the same time, what is the most profitable in, uh, way to invest, then watch this video. It's a very important video. I genuinely believe in the cause and I've been meaning to make it since a very long period of time because I was getting a lot of requests around this topic, which is around index um, funds. What are index funds? How can it really lead to a larger profitability when you invest? And uh, at the same time, how is it really going to make sure that that amongst all the asset classes, this is the one where you should be putting your money into. So I am going to be dividing this video into three parts. First and foremost, the why of investing, right? I understand that a lot of youngsters, a lot of retail uh, investors are really mesmerized by this uh, the world of investing, but probably are not even sure where should they put their money in, if they should be putting their money in and why should they should uh, be putting their money in. Uh, so that's the first part. The second part is we will talk about the world of index funds. What is this world of index funds? Why is this really new thing coming up? And why is this uh, new thing uh, really attractive to a lot of uh, mature investors? And point number three, now that you understand and appreciate the world of investing, now that you understand and appreciate the world of index funds, how and when should you invest your penny or how and when should you invest your dollars or rupees into the index funds? So let's first and foremost hit uh, directly on the ground uh, in the world of investing. Many people actually either don't save or they save, right? So let's start with the fact that you are, or let's start with the assumption that you have been saving your money. If you have not been saving your money, I have made another video, how uh, rich people really manage their money. You should definitely watch that video if you have not been saving at all, because the first rule of investing is you need that savings, you need that cash to eventually say, uh, inv eventually invest, right? You are not taking on debt to eventually invest. So with the assumption that you have certain savings in your bank account, you want to invest, Invest. Now the next question is where should you invest, right? Uh, you could put that money in insurance, you could put that money for your education, you could put that money in your upskilling or you could put in that money in the stock equity market or in the bond market. So there are a couple of investment classes. Uh, keeping the point aside that my value proposition or my viewpoint is always if you have limited dollars you should invest that dollar in your upskilling and in your learning and development because the returns that you get is extremely unparalleled and very highly compounded. But with the understanding that this is a finance video and this is a personal, this is investment video, I am going to be talking about few investment classes such as bonds and equities, right? So for example, it's typically said that you should invest in bond and I am coming from the same school of thought as Warren Buffett, which is who propagates the value-based investing, right? So you should invest in the world of bonds, largely when the economy is doing good, the interest rates are high, versus when the economy is doing bad, you should not, it's not advocated that you should be putting your money in bonds because the interest rates are low. If you're interested to know about what are bonds and when should you invest in bonds in a much more depth, uh, in-depth manner, then there is another video that I made about the entire bond market. Feel free to check that out. I will put that link in the description. But now coming to the major mode topic, which is around equities, right? So you decide that I have $100 Shatakshi and I have that $100 savings every month and I would, I have kept, let's say $30 for my learnings and for my uh, upskilling. The rest $70, I do not know, right? I want to pump that money into the market. So because there are so many investors on YouTube, there are so many investors who are talking about why and how you should be put, putting your money in, right? And obviously because everyone wants to be invested largely because it's a bull market. But coming back to the topic that you now want to invest your money in stocks, right? So the problem is with stocks, you do not know which stock to pick. You do not know if you have $70, should you be put it, putting $30 in X stock, $40 in Y stock, or should you be doing 20, 20, 20 and $10? You do not know the breakup and the proportion of the amount that you should be putting in, right? And those are really important questions. And then there is another question of timing the market also. Are you per, uh, purchasing an asset? Are you purchasing a stock which is cheaper right now or which is at an all time high, right? So those questions become really very critical for you to invest because A, it's your hard earned money and B, you have to ensure that investing is taking place. It is not burning your money. You are actually making sure that you are getting gain, uh, you're gaining over your money. 
So those are really important questions and many people and truth be told in true honesty I started investing when the crash of uh, 20, 2020 um, I believe took place and um, I, I think I definitely got if in my portfolio there were 20 stocks I got almost 12, 13 right but the truth of the matter is I got 7 to 8 wrong and the unfortunate reality is most of the smartest right the smartest investors on earth actually are not able to beat the market what do i mean by market nifty 50 for example is an in, uh, market index uh, right so what does that mean the top 50 organizations on that chart are going to be representing nifty 50 the top 50 by market capitalization so now what it eventually means is the people who can invest they want to invest because of their nerdy passion People want to pick up the art of investing. People want to pick up the science of investing. Hence, they end up picking individual stocks. Few stocks will be a great hit and human beings are optimistic by nature. If a stock is giving you a great return, you would give the credit to your own self. But if the stock is not giving you great return, you would blame the market, right? And that's how most of the smart people on earth think. They want to think that they are really smart beings we typically over optimize or we are very optimistic about our strengths if on a scale of 100 you have an iq of 70 you would typically think that you have an iq of 80. people want to pick stocks because they can pick stocks because they like to learn that art they like to learn that science at least that's the world i came in i burnt my hands in few of those investments but i made a couple of uh, majority amount in few of those stocks. But what have I learned in that entire journey? The, the art and the science that I've learned is you cannot beat the growth at which the market is, uh, you cannot beat the growth uh, of the market, right? So typically um, it's said that 90% of the mutual, uh, mutual fund managers actually are not able to beat index funds over a long period of time, I repeat. 90% of the active mutual fund managers are not able to beat the market in the long term. At this stage, I think I'm entering into the second category of this video, what are index funds? Index funds are a type of a mutual fund, which basically uh, imply that all your money is going to be put up in a benchmark index. So for example, you could say that I am 30 years old, and I am going to be putting my money in Nifty 50 index fund. So Nifty 50 are the top 50 companies by market capitalization and all your money is going to be pumped into the Nifty 50 index fund. Or for example, there are another index funds such as Next, uh, Next 50. So for example, the next 50 organizations apart from the top Nifty 50 are going to be the index where you put in a lot of your money, right? All, um, all of that $70. Now, why is that important? Why is index funds really picking up? Why is why has Warren Buffett been really advocating index funds since a really long period of time? So index fund is this passive form of investing and I've taken notes here to make sure that I cover all the points for all of you because it is actually a very important video. You actually win by accepting defeat. It's a really beautiful sentence you win by accepting defeat you understand you appreciate the fact that the market is growing let's say by 20 to 25 percentage you may win in few stocks by picking those stocks and get a uh, get a return of 30 percentage but you accept the fact that i am not going to be an ace investor at least i'm not going to be better than those mutual active mutual fund managers 90 percentage of those who are not able to beat the index funds right you understand and appreciate that there are a lot more nuances then you could control you it is okay that you want to play around and learn the art of investing you could have five dollars for that but you do not put that rest of 70 dollars that we uh, started our entire case with right so you become smart you learn and you gain maximum profit just by accepting your defeat on day one that I understand and appreciate the fact that 90% of the actual mutual fund managers who are actually doing this for a living are not able to beat the index fund over a long period of time and hence probably it's going to be very hard for me also to actually beat that uh, uh, index market index fund over a long period of time mind you long period of time we are following value-based investing we are following long-term investing mindset and hence this video is definitely not for those day traders who are trying to make rich quick money and who may burn their hand in that greediness to make quick rich money 
which brings me towards now the two things that I want to talk about index funds. I have explained what an index funds is basically a passive form of active uh, mutual funds, but I now want to talk about return on investment. If you have $70, right? Remember, we said that you have $100 you started with, $30 you put in for your upskilling and learning because that is where you will grow on in your life in the long term. And the rest $70 you, uh, you are trying to put in the equity markets. For every investment you have, you look at the return on investment and there is a return part of the investment equation. There is an investment part of the equation. There are five things that I want to talk about in the return part of the equation for the index funds. Point number one is uh, you understand and appreciate the fact that the market will win always in the long period of time. For example, you pick five stocks and those five stocks give you an average of let's say 20 percentage return over a long period of time, but the market is giving you almost 30 percentage of the return over a long period of time. So we are looking at long period of time. You understand and you appreciate the fact that the market will always win in the long period of time rather than cherry picking two, three stocks. So that's point number one in terms of getting a return. Point number two is less volatility. If you pick few stocks, they could be from pharma industry, they could be from industrial good industry, they could be from tech industry. The kind of volatility they would have, the kind of beta they would have with respect to the market will be really very high, right? Because you're not just in finance, there are two types of risk. There is idiosyncratic risk and there are market risk. Market risk is the volatility at which the market is moving. And then there are idiosyncratic risk, the risk that the company has um, because of the debt they have or because of the liabilities they have, etc. But once you actually invest in the index funds, you are just exposing yourself to the market risk and not at all to the idiosyncratic risks of the firm. So that's point number two, because of which you get a higher return rather than picking up cherry picking few stocks. Point number three is about weights, which is really very important. By weights, I mean proportion and ratio. Remember, we were discussing if you have $70, you do not need, you do not know if you should be putting $20 in TCS and $30 in Wipro and another $20 in XYZ place, right? When you put in that lump sum $70, in that index fund, the index fund manager, whosoever that organization will be, will automatically put the proportion in the ratio in which the Nifty 50, for example, is replicating, right? So for example, in Nifty 50, hypothetically, you say that TCS contributes 25 percentage of Nifty 50, right? Hypothetically. So when you put that $70, 25 percentage of that $70 will automatically go to Nifty, uh, will automatically go to TCS, right? So you do not have to spend so much energy and time on important questions. The index fund will actually take care of itself. That's the third important point because of which your returns are enhanced. The fourth point, like I said, 90% of the mutual fund managers have not been able to beat the S&P 500 in US over a long period of time. Mind you, in the short period of time, uh, the active mutual fund managers have been able to beat uh, the, index market, um, the index fund. In this video, we are very sure we are talking about long term horizon and I will show you through data how you can actually beat these mutual fund managers or how you can beat individual stock picking through the index fund over a long period of time. We are playing a long term game. We understand that we do not have expenses such as real estate or cars, etc, etc. Hence, we want to perpetually put in our money in the index fund. So that's the fourth point because of which you get a higher return. The fifth point is it's the easiest way to invest. You are not stressed. You are, I'm assuming you are not an investor. Well, if you're watching this video, you are either someone who is working, you're either someone who is a student, right? You have 90% of your day goes in either studying or working, getting a promotion, pivoting your career, etc. Right? So not someone who is an investor. That means that you do not have the time, the energy, the mental bandwidth to understand, appreciate and manage your investment portfolio. All you want is that your money grows with time so that growth that takes place over your money could be eventually invested in your health, in your child's education and other dreams of traveling, for example, if you may have. So those are the five reasons because you with which you get a higher return on your investment via the index fund. Let's now talk about the investment, right? Remember, I said there are two parts to the equation. One is the return and the second one is the investment part. 
the first and foremost uh, point that I want to talk about is commission. So for example, if you put in your money in a mutual fund, the kind of commission that they may charge would be in the range of two to five percentage. Uh, it's, it's a range, right? It could be one percentage or five percentage also. But when you actually invest your money through the index funds, right? Then the commission that is charged by the fund manager is in a very small range in the range of 0.2 percentage to 0.5 percentage at times it is really less it could be 0.05 percentage etc as well and why is that commission less because nobody sitting behind computer and actively managing which security to buy should i game the market and should i not game the market right so most of the times people think that becoming rich is a function of the salary you get or the return that you get, right? We forget the kind of expenses you have. So even in an actively managed mutual fund, you have expenses after the return that you get from the market and we cannot afford to miss out that that per expense that you are going to incur, that is going to get from your pocket. So that's point number one, that the commission that is charged by the fund manager for an index fund is really less. Point number two is opportunity cost. Even if you have an argument and say that Shatakshi, I'm not going to put my money in mutual funds, I'm going to be picking the stocks that I have. But what about the opportunity cost of time? You could have invested the same time to upskill yourself, to get into the world of consulting or to get into the best uh, business school of your dreams, right? So investment, there is an opportunity cost to time and you cannot discount that entirely. So that's point number two. Point number three is definitely around tax. Many people once uh, again do not uh, think about the taxes that they will have to pay eventually. So for example, in index funds, because we are under the assumption that you're investing for a long period of time, at least six to 10 years, and you are not buying and selling your securities and stocks very periodically. Hence, it's not short term investing, it's long term investing and the tax that's charged over a long term investing is relatively less. And hence, overall, because of this passive form of investing strategy, which is the easiest and which is the most profitable over a long period of time, you get a high return on investment. That's the point I've been really thinking of landing upon all of you since a very long period of time, because I see this re really new trend uh, of retail young investors putting in their hard-earned money, I worry if their hands would be burned, right? It is fine to learn the science and art of uh, investing by probably having that $5 out of the $70 bucket, but please do yourself a favor. If you want, if your first objective of investing should be to grow your money, to not play around with the money. So that's point number two. We move towards the third category. Now that you understand the power of investing, the power of index investing, how should you go about uh, investing in an index fund if you should be interested? So I'll share a screenshot of few of the uh, leading index funds in this country. This video, mind you, is not promoted uh, or uh, sponsored at all. You could see few commission, the commissions that are charged by them and the kind of return they have given on an year or year basis. So that's point number one, because just because you want to invest in Nifty 50, uh, benchmark index doesn't mean that there is only one organization that will allow you to actually invest in nifty 50. They are going to be multiple uh, organization. Point number two is of course you need a broker account because, through which you could actually pump in that money. That could be from uh, the new age investing platform such as Zerodha. I come from a very old school thought. Uh, I'm someone who v values investing in the long term. Hence, I have a mutual fund account, uh, broking, uh, broker account with one of the leading banks in this country. I prefer to actually invest not through Zerodhas of the world because I fear you have accessibility of the app on your phone. Hence, the panic may hit you relatively quickly. Then the panic may hit you with a passive a uh, broker account with a mutual fund account manager. It's a slow process of buying and selling and I want my investment to be a slow process of buying and selling because uh, Charlie Munger, who is uh, one of the co-founders of uh, Berkshire Hathaway along with Von Buffet says beautifully that the first rule of compounding is to not break it unnecessarily. The first rule of compounding is to not break it unnecessarily. And last but not the least, Let's talk about time, right? You may ask Shatakshi, the market is at an all time high. Should you be investing? Should I be investing in index funds right now or not? It's a really beautiful question. And Warren Buffett time and again have actually mentioned 
in his um, shareholder interactions with Berkshire, uh, Berkshire Hathaway shareholders that you should periodically be spending, um, putting in your money in index funds over a long period of time. Let me give an example. So for example, on September 7th, 2018, the Nifty 50 was all, at an all time high of 11,589 points, right? So on September 7th, 2018, you would think that I would not want to put my money in index funds right now, largely because the market is at, at an all time high. That's what your thought process would be. Comes 2021 and the Nifty 50 currently looks at uh, 18,338. This is as of December 29th when I'm shooting this video. So even when you would think that the market is at an all time high, remember we are talking in the context of long term horizon, right? Six to 10 years. So my advice eventually for you would be to A, open a broker's account if you do not have one. Point number two, pick an index fund manager based on the lowest commission and the highest rate of return they have given. And point number three, keep on perpetually putting your money because we are investing in the fact that the market will beat any individual stock over a long period of time. I hope this video was helpful from your investment learning point of view. Please make sure that uh, you are not just uh, burning your money within the adventure of learning the science and art of investing, which is fine. I'm all in for learning, but please make sure that you have certain amount of money out of the entire portfolio or the lump sum money you have for learning. But the rest of it, I strongly believe and even legendary investors such as Warren Buffett have mentioned that if you that you actually win by accepting the defeat, you actually win by accepting the defeat. If you do not get biases that I am going to be an optimistic person and I am going to be a winner in the market, if you accept the fact that your biases are getting in, you will be the one who will win the most in the market. With that, I'll take your leave. Take care and stay safe. Bye. Subscribe right now so that you get notified every time, every day, whenever I'm putting up my videos on career advancement, personal finance, and lots of productivity hacks.